Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, every good thing has to come to an end. In fact, everything has to come to an end other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no beginning and no ending. Other than Allah, everything has beginning and ending. Whether they are good things or bad things, 
but one feels tremendous pain and grief when good things and good times come to an end. But they are a tremendous reminder to us in order to check as our life is a test, Ramadan and 29 to 30 days of Ramadan are also a test. A test for our actions, our commitment, our sacrifices, our priorities to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way we are required to obey is to follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all these things, all these activities, the whole purpose is to make it easy for you. Verse number 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah, one portion I have recited where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah wants to make it easy for you. Don't think Ramadan fasting and the activities of Ramadan came to make it difficult for you. No, it came to make it easy for you. It is a reminder. It will bring you back to a balanced status because normally we disturb the balance. To restore the balance after every 11 month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this ni'mah and bounty that Ramadan will come and it will allow us to restore that balance. Now the question is, very little time left. And in the last 10 days, tonight is the last Laylatul Qadr. You know, 29th night of the Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan. Today is 28th. So tonight is the 29th night. And according to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look for Laylatul Qadr in the five odd nights in the last ten days. 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th and 29th. And if any one of us has done whatever was required to do, then there are tremendous glad tidings for us. But if many of us lagged behind and we could not do what we supposed to have done, we can still catch up with the remaining moments of Ramadan because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has spoken about, we have already talked about the, the value of Laylatul Qadr last week that it is better than 1,000 months, which is more than 83 years. But in the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever stands in prayer in the night of power, that Laylatul Qadr, with the two conditions, Imanan wa ihtisaban, not for name and fame, not for ego satisfaction, not for any other reason. Believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing that Allah is going to reward you for that, Allah will forgive all your previous and future sins. And when we read in the Hadith or in the Quran about the forgiven of the sins, all the sins, make sure you understand that we have two kinds of sins, Sagha'ir and Kaba'ir. Only Sagha'ir will be forgiven without Tawbah. Like one Ramadan to another Ramadan, one Jum'ah to another Jum'ah, one prayer to another prayer. 
if you have done small sins or small mistakes, they will be forgiven. But the big sins, you have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without repentance, the big sins will not be forgiven. So this is also tonight an opportunity that we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all our previous sins. Another very important note, when we are repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if our mistakes and our sins involve the violation of any human rights, your repentance will not be valid unless you pay back, you make your peace. And if it involves the material wealth, then you give it back to the people. You can't say that I took money from such and such person and I'm repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah forgive me. No, Allah is not going to forgive the huquq al ibad the due rights of the people unless they are paid and they must be paid in this world or in the hereafter. You will be safer to pay in this world because it will become very difficult in the hereafter. You will have to be paying with your deeds of righteousness and when they come to an end you will be taking the other people's deeds of righteousness. Another question we need to ask that in the last 28 days did I become a mature person by reading and listening to the Holy Quran by contemplating in the words of the Holy Quran like in Surah number 72, beginning verses, Surah Al Jinn, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited the Quran to the Jinn, you know, this invisible creation of Allah made out of fire, they say, Inna sami'na Quranan ajaba. We heard a wonderful Quran. Are we able to see the wonders of the Holy Quran? Are we reaching that level of understanding? And what is the wonder of the Holy Quran which is mentioned in the next verse? Yahdi ila rushd. It guides you to rushd. What is rushd? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in the Holy Quran Surah Yusuf and Surah Al-Qasas. As regard to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and as regard to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam that they were bestowed upon by the mission and prophethood when they reached the Rushd فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ The word Ashud is used that is the maturity that is the physical, intellectual and spiritual maturity. That is the kind of maturity when a person is balanced in every aspect of his or her life. Yahdi la rushdi fa'aman so we believed in. So whenever we are sitting to study the Holy Quran, we need to think about it. Is it taking me to that level, that intellectual level? Because if somebody does something, you, you see, which is not good, we say, oh, what kind of childish thing is this? Rush is the opposite of that. The things which you do with the wisdom and knowledge, the things which you do following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way they were followed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did we <coughs> increase our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month and to do that al is istighfar in addition to tawbah you have to recite more frequently astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhanbin adnabtuhu amadan aw khata'an sirran aw alaniyah 
وأتوب إليه من الذنب الذي أعلم ومن الذنب الذي لا أعلم إنك أنت علام الغيوب وستار العيوب وغفار الذنوب ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do the istighfar more than 70 times a day. Did we grow, grow in our understanding of Islam that we are looking into akhirah that is our ultimate success is connected with akhirah and the akhirah success of course as we have the akhirah of Ramadan we will have our own akhirah end of this world when we will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we <coughs> more frequently begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> for our words and our actions meaning are we saying alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtari lawla an hadana Allah whatever good I have done in the holy month of Ramadan it's not big deal they are not you know don't satisfy your ego you say it is only and only by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was able to do these things that will maintain your humbleness with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your humility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And have we made a decision that we are going to keep the most beautiful activities which we were engaged in and there are two major activities Ramadan fasting and the recitation and understanding and contemplating into the meaning and message of Ramadan so even after Ramadan if you can fast six days of Shawwal that will make one holy year's reward for you fast every Monday and Thursday or fast three days every month to keep that activity with you and continue to make the habit even if it is one verse even if it is one concept of the Quran I will do it every single day as regularly as I did in the holy month of Ramadan and find out did I really taste the Iman? Like the Prophet said, Zaqa ta'mal Iman. You know, a person has tasted the taste of Iman. If you do three things, Man razia billahi rabba. Truly and practically, not only in words, do I have this status that I am well pleased with Allah as my cherisher Lord. Whatever He decides for me, I am going to believe in that and I am going to believe that. Man radiya billahi rabba wa bil islami deena. And Islam as a religious system for me. I don't have any problem. There are people who say, oh, for the most part, Islam is good. You know, I have certain problem with this and certain problem with that. No, that does not keep you as a believer. You have to take it as a package deal. Wabi Muhammadin Rasul and Wanabiya. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a prophet and messenger, meaning that he the only one who is my role model. I'm not going to look at this or that. You know? It is Allah who has reminded me through chapter 33 verse 21 that my role model is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In that verse of 185 say Am I glorifying Allah and I'm offering my gratitudes for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So brothers and sisters in Islam, if some of these good deeds we keep with us in the next 11 months, inshallah we will be ready to receive Ramadan one more time. The time is over, the death, you know, the knowledge is tremendous there, but the knowledge cannot be power unless we practice it. So let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we learn today, we are going to keep it with us in our actions and in our words. And we will keep the holiness of Ramadan with us, inshallah, in coming 11 months. And the last and final word is, Nothing is valid without maintaining the most beautiful relationship on all three levels. Siblings of humanity, siblings of faith and siblings in blood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide each and every one of us to fulfill our responsibility in connecting with Allah by following His commandment and in connecting with the Prophet by following His role model. واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الرحمن الرحيم جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة أجمعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وسلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين بدوار الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم وفق لا إلى كل ما تحبه وترضاه من القول والعمل يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منه والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعيركم لعلكم تذكرون اذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر شهدوا أن لا إله إلا الله شهدوا أن محمد رسول الله